Here's another series of videos from the Universal Machinist. Once assembled, they can show a guy how to properly inspect a part and record his findings. We'll explore proper deburring techniques, proper inspection techniques, and how to record the information on the in-process inspection report. So let's get started. These are the basics of deburring. A burr is a raised edge or a small piece of material remaining attached to a workpiece after a modification process. It's usually an unwanted piece of material and is removed with a deburring tool in a process called deburring. Burrs are most commonly created after machining operations such as grinding, drilling, milling, engraving, or turning. It may be present in the form of a fine wire on the edge of a freshly sharp tool or a raised portion of a surface. I've got a machine component here and we can see the burr that's been kicked up on the edge. This is often called a rollover burr. This is a fly cutter. It's leaving a rollover burr on the edge. We'll pull it close and take a look at it. It's been cleaned up a little, but the rollover burr is still there. So there's a number of ways to get rid of it. And these are the deburring tools that we would use. Starting with the swivel deburrer. and the countersink. You can use an X-Acto knife or a razor blade and of course files. First thing we'll look at is the swivel blade. Here it is, cutting a corner. Here it is on a block of aluminum. Be really careful because it tends to skip a little bit. Try to use an exaggerated angle. These are countersinks. I put mine in a little hand chuck. Use it for just taking down the edge. Here's how you'd use a straight edge razor. I've made a burr knife out of the end of a file. And that's how you use a burr knife. Sandpaper is used in this instance for lapping. Flat lapping done on a surface plate. Knock the burrs down off of this after it comes out of the machine. So these are the basic tools and techniques of deburring. Show us how you do it. That's it. Thanks for watching. This is a very brief video about lapping. And this is a lapping table. Sometimes lapping is also done on a surface plate. Make sure you're allowed to do that before you do it. And here's some basic lapping techniques. Circular technique. Figure eight technique. Up and back. And that's the basics of lapping. Thanks for watching.
This video is about the A100 swivel deburring blade and this is a swivel deburr the blade itself that's on the end of this. And we have a multiple use setup here. We're going to put the blade in this one. And we're going to show it to you in action on some plastic so you can see what it does to the burr. Completely removes it. And here it is on some metal. This is one of the most common tools you use in deburring is the swivel blade. And that's the basics of the A100 or swivel deburring blade. Thanks for watching. Here's some basic deburring techniques sent to us from a viewer. Right, how you guys doing today? My name's Evan and I wanted to show you some basic deburring techniques that I've picked up recently. So it's a common issue for people to want to angle down and go with a lot of force and that's going to cause to uh, gouge out the plastic or whatever you're deburring and skip over it. What you want to do is keep your hand more perpendicular with it, lead it a little bit, and pull it out. So again, if you're coming down here, you're going to gouge the plastic and you're going to skip and it's going to look not professional. So again, lead it. See how it skips when you press too hard? Another technique with the swivel deer burr when you're doing a rounded edge, instead of having the swivel deer burr vertical, straight up and down, lean it back just so it gets a, a cleaner cut instead of getting the uh, skipping again. Viewer videos are very important to us and we look forward to seeing yours in the near future. Thanks for watching. Now that we've adequately deburred the part, it's time to put it on a surface plate and inspect it. So let's find a surface plate. Here's our identification of a surface plate. Surface plates are made of granite. Their flatness is accurate to within one tenth of a thousandth of an inch. Clean them with glass cleaner, alcohol, or a surface plate cleaner. You need a good oil-free dry surface to slide your inspection devices on. There are small and large surface plates. And that's identifying the surface plate. Thanks for watching. This video is about simple identification of the height gauge. This is a sharp Edelon dial height gauge. And here it is on a surface plate. This is simple identification of the height gauge. Thanks for watching. This video is about the basic use of a height gauge. For this test we're going to use the sharp Edelon dial gauge. And what we're looking to do is just find zero from the bottom of the surface plate to the top of the part. The first thing we'll do is we'll come down with the part out of the way and bring the height gauge down and set zero on the table. And this is on the indicator as well as on the dial. And then we can just back up. Go over to the part and dial down and look at the indicator and make that set at zero. And then you look at your dial. And that's the reading on this guy here. And that's how to check basic height with a dial height gauge. Thanks for watching. This is a brief description of the in process inspection report. And this is an IIR and it's mated to the blueprint. Now what's happened is the quality control department has designated certain specifications to be monitored and recorded. So your job is to find these things on the blueprint, match them up to the IIR, and record your findings. When you get your package together, make sure you've got your datum simulators, which are your go, no go gauges, thread gauges, all the things that you need, dial bore gauges, anything that you need to do the inspections to run the job. Make sure that you only enter factual information, never lie on the IIR. And that's a brief description of the in process inspection report. Thanks for watching. 
So this is another custom assembly out of our library of hundreds of videos that you can put together for any skill level. Little pieces of information that can be assembled into a custom curriculum or one at a time in bite sized elements. That's the Universal Machinist videos of five minutes or less on all things machinist. Thanks to our contributors and thank you for watching.